Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I cry to you all the day long. O Lord, you are good and forgiving, full of mercy to all who call to you. Psalm 86, verses 3 and 5. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we begin to celebrate these sacred mysteries today, we recognize that um, you know this. We know we offer this Mass for you. Um, and so what that means in so many ways is we're inviting you, not only offering the sacrifice of Jesus, the Son, to the Father, we're inviting you to participate by placing your sorrows on this altar, by placing your sufferings on this altar, by placing your cares on this altar, and even by placing your joys and your, your prayers, whatever, whatever you have, wherever you are, to place those on this altar. And when we do that, we're uniting our sorrows with the sorrow, the man of sorrow, right, Jesus. We're uniting our sufferings with the man who suffered on the cross, Jesus. We're uniting even our joys and glories with the one who is glorified now and forever in heaven, Jesus. To prepare our hearts to do this, to place our needs, our prayers, our joys, ourselves on this altar, we ask God to meet us in our need, in our sorrows, in our joys, with his grace. So we pray, Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to seek and to save the lost, Christ have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You live to intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift. Put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. We ask this through our Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we hear from God's word. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Now Israel, hear the statutes and decrees which I am teaching you to observe, that you may live and may enter in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you, in your observance of the commandments of, your, of the Lord, your God, which I enjoin upon you. You shall not add to what I command you, nor subtract from it. Observe them carefully. For thus will you give evidence of your wisdom and intelligence to the nations who will hear of all these statutes and say, This great nation is truly a wise and intelligent people. For what great nation is there that has gods so close to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? Or what great nation has statutes and decrees that are as just as this whole law, which I am setting before you today? 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. The one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. Whoever walks blamelessly and does justice, who thinks the truth in his heart and slanders not with his tongue, the one, one who, who does, does justice will live, live in the presence of the Lord. Lord. Who harms not his fellow man, nor takes up a reproach against his neighbor, by whom the reprobate is despised, while he honors those who fear the Lord. The, the one, one who, who does, does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. Who lends not his money at usury, and accept no bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things shall not be disturbed. The, the one, one who, who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. James. Dearest brothers and sisters, all good giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of light, with whom there is no alteration or shadow caused by change. He will to give us birth by the word of truth, that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Humbly welcome the word that has been planted in you and is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deluding yourselves. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their afflictions, and to keep oneself sustained, unstained by the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Chapter 7, verses 1 through 8, verses 14 and 15, and verses 21 through 23. When the Pharisees heard with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed, the purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and the scribes questioned him, why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? Jesus responded, Well did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human precepts. You disregard God's commandments, but cling to human tradition. He summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person, but the things that come out from within are what defile. From within people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from within, and they defile. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I should have a seat. So I was thinking the other day, I was just, I mean, you know, you know, sometimes we have these phrases, like, especially phrases when someone says thank you, like how we respond to someone who says thank you. There's all these different ways. There's the common, you're welcome. But I actually came across something that said that uh, Gen Z right now, maybe Gen Alpha, um, they don't say you're welcome. They'll just say no problem. Um, I think that's interesting because I say no problem. I like the Australian, no worries. Um, the, the, the not at all. That's kind of, the, all those things are kind of fun. But but there's one phrase that I think is kind of just interesting. When someone says, hey, thank you, when we're, our response is, it's the least I could do. And I think about that because it's just, it's an interesting thing to say, but I think like, well, no, that's not true. <laughs> like, it's, I don't know, it's not the least you could do. Like, you could have done less, probably. I mean, you could do nothing. But at the same time, it, at the same time, it also is true. And, what, and what, what I mean by that is this. I think what you're saying, when we're saying, we say, it's the least I could do, we're saying is, um, this is the least I could do as your friend, or this is the least I could do as your son, or this is the least I could do as your sibling, or this is the least I could do as your coworker. Another way to say it is, 
this is the least I could do and still have a relationship with you. Because I, I, think, I think that's real. That's, that's, that's probably true. I, I, I mean, really, truly, if that's accurate, if, if you know, someone says thank you and you say that's the least I could do, if that's accurate, what you're saying is, I did the minimum. Which I think is, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, I had, a, I had a friend back in the day and he said, if the minimum wasn't good enough, it wouldn't be called the minimum. So the minimum must be good enough. I think it's really good to know the minimum. I think it's really good to know, like, what is the least I could do? I think it's good to know where the floor is, <laughs> another way to say it like that. Um, you know, a couple weeks ago, a couple different Sundays, we were asking about the ideal, right? So we had a homily on rest. And the question was, do you have a picture of your ideal rest day? Like, what's, what's the heights? What's, what's the perfect rest day? Another couple weeks ago, we asked the question, uh, in your stage of life, in your season of life, what does a win look like? And in both those questions, we're asking about the ideal, right? We're asking about kind of like the thing you strive for, which is awesome. It's so good to have a clear picture of what a win looks like. It's great to have a very clear picture of what does rest look like. Um, I think it's, it's really great to know, okay, what's, what am I striving for? Because we're made to strive. It's good to know where's the ceiling. But I think it's also as valuable to know where the floor is. That, that, that on a daily basis, to know, okay, what actually is the minimum? What, what actually is the least I could do? You know, with myself, like what's the least I could do and still be okay as me? What, what's the least I could do um, in life? What's the least I could do as a married person, if you're a married person? What's the least I could do as a son or daughter of your parents? What's the least I could do for my friends? What's the least I could do for my health and still be okay. Like still be, like we're not talking the idea, we're not talking what we're striving for, we're not talking about the ceiling, we're talking about where's the floor? And I think we need to go there because here we are at Mass. It's good to ask the question. What is the least you could do when it comes to the most important relationship in your life? What's the least you could do when it comes to God? When it comes to God, what's the minimum? Like when it comes to God, where's the floor? Because remember this, um, the minimum isn't nothing. But to ask the question, what is the least you could do and still have a relationship? And, and I'm not saying something like, what's the least I can do in the sense of just checking a box? That's not what I'm going for. Because like Jesus said in the gospel today, he says, these people, they honor me with their lips. Like they're checking boxes all the time. But their hearts are far from me. And that's the problem, right? Because the least I can do is not just get by, skate by, check boxes. What's the least I could do and still give the Lord my heart? I think one of the biggest frustrations we all have, this is like everyone across the board as Christians, as Catholics, it's that I have faith in my head, but it hasn't yet reached my heart, right? The, the, the reality that, that I believe, like I know, but I haven't been able to cross those 12 inches, right, from my head to my heart. I've heard it said many times that the longest 12 inches in the universe is the foot of space that lives between my head and my heart. The hardest distance to travel is that distance between my head and my heart. And so the question is, what's the minimum? What's the least I could do to make cross that distance between my head and, or even is it possible? How do we do it? Like, how do we, right now, today, cross that distance between our head and our heart so we don't end up like Jesus says, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Well, I think this, I think James gives us a clue. It's the second reading today, in the book of James, the letter of James. And it's the most simple and it's the most straightforward way to bridge the gap between our head and our heart. James says it kind of like this. He says, okay, all those things you believe, um, act on them. Like all those things you know about God, do them. That's why he says, he says, be doers of the word and not hearers only who delude yourselves. You're fooling yourselves. I, I would say this, the, the most direct way from your head to your heart passes through your hands. All those things you know, put them into action. It turns out that that's the least we can do. And I think this is fascinating because James goes on to talk about two of the three essential things that we need. So, so here's, a, here's an interesting thing. James already presumes that we're going to be worshiping God, right? James already knows. In the book of James, letter of James, he already knows we're worshiping God. That's the first thing. We need to be worshiping God. But he also talks about two other things we need to be doing. He says, religion that is pure and undefiled does two things. 
It's where you care for orphans and widows in their affliction, and you keep yourself unstained by the world. So here's James. He says, here's the minimum. Here, here's, here's the floor. The minimum is this, these three things. Worship, love of neighbor, and holiness. Those are the three things that every one of us needs to do. These are the least I could possibly do. Another way to say it is love God in your actions. That's worship. Love your neighbor in your actions. That's charity, right? That's, that's helping. That's service. And then thirdly, reject everything that keeps you from these things. That's holiness. Again, love God in your actions, worship. Love your neighbor in your actions, charity, service. And reject everything that keeps you from these things. Pursuit of holiness. Because... We know this. We know this, that our actions, our choices, that's the most direct route between our head and our heart. And it goes through our hands. It's what we do. So James goes on to say, if you don't do this, you're deluded. James says that if you don't do this, if you're a hearer and not a doer, you are fooling yourself. Because why? Because every act of worship is meant to get to our heart. Every act of caring for our neighbor is meant to get to our heart. Every act of, of rejecting sin and choosing grace is meant to get to our heart. Another way to say it is every act of worship, of love, and of holiness is meant to draw us closer to God. Do you know that the, actually the Hebrew people, the Jewish people, they had a word for something that draws you close to God. You actually probably heard this word before. The Hebrew word that means to draw, something which draws close is the Hebrew word korban. So in the Jewish world, if something were there, it was there to draw you close to God. That's what korban means, something which draws you close. If there was something that would draw you close to God, you call that korban. And so there were sacrifices that were korban because they draw you close to God. There, there are prayers that are korban. There, there are acts of charity, acts of love that, that are korban. There's prayers that are korban. Why? Because all of those actions are something that draw you close. The problem is this. The problem is there's more than one way that we can delude ourselves. There's more than one way we can fool ourselves. One is, as St. James says, by being a hearer and not a doer. Another way is by being a doer but doing the wrong things. And I don't mean doing the wrong things in the sense of doing sins. I mean doing the wrong things in the sense of uh, tap dancing at a ballet, right? That's not the right place, not the right time, not the right thing. Or another way to say it is uh, fasting when it's time to feast. I'm doing the wrong thing. And there's an example of this in the gospel today. So the gospel, here's this whole story of um, Jesus' Jesus' disciples are being criticized by the Jews because they're eating with unwashed hands. And Mark goes on to say that's actually a tradition of the elders, tradition of the Pharisees, is that, you know, you don't eat with unwashed hands. He's not talking about cleanliness. He's not talking about sanitation. What he's talking about, or hygiene, what he's talking about is that um, the Pharisees had this mindset. It, It was not a bad mindset. The mindset was this, hey, we were given rules about how to worship God in the temple. And so if you worship God in the temple, you wash your hands a certain way. If you worship God in the temple, you wash your vessels in a certain way. If you worship God in the temple, you wash your clothes and all these things in a certain way. Those are all good things. The Pharisees said, you know what? Those are good things. And those are meant to do what? They're meant to be the route from the head to the heart. They're meant to be korban, something that draws you close. How about this? How about we bring temple worship into daily life? That'd be awesome. That, that if washing like this in the temple is, is great, that purification is great, I'm going to wash like that at home. If taking care of the vessels of, of worship are important like to be like this, I'm going to take my home vessels and treat them like this. What I'm going to do is, is if I do this, if I bring this into my daily life, then my whole life will be marked by an awareness of God's presence. That, it's actually a really, really good thing. But that really, really good thing is a ceiling. That really, really good idea is an ideal. And there's a problem there because they began seeing what was optional as now being essential. They started treating that ceiling like, oh, that's the new floor. They started treating that, that maximum, that's the new minimum. They started treating that ideal as now that's the least you can do. And that is, that is heavy. That's burdensome. 
I know people would say this, they say like, well, you're one to talk, Catholics, I know you guys too. You guys have so many rules, are you kidding me? Like, what's the minimum for Catholics? I, that's a great, I think, I think that's a great question. What is the minimum for Catholics? In fact, um, what are the precepts Catholics have? I mean, in the gospel today, it says you're teaching as mere, uh, as commandments, mere human precepts. Does the Catholic Church have any precepts? And the answer is yes. And these, and these precepts are this. So, so basically, we have the commandments, obviously, that's not precepts, those are the commandments of God, Exodus. You have the Beatitudes, Jesus himself, in Matthew's gospel. And then the church has five precepts. And these five precepts of the church, this is like the, what the church says, hey, you wanna know the least you can do? These five things. And here's, the, here's what they are, they're very, very simple. Number one is uh, attending mass every Sunday and holy day of obligation. Okay, so mass on Sunday, worship. Um, while at mass, at least once a year, the second one is at least once a year, receiving holy communion during Easter season. Now, the reason it was only once a year is because there, were t there was a time where people were so um, intimidated by the holiness of the Eucharist that they would go their entire lives and never receive communion because they're like, no, that's really Jesus. I need to stay away. And the Pope was like, listen, guys, at least once. So go to Mass every Sunday, Holy Day, receive communion at least once. And then third is go to confession at least once a year. So this is this, this first two is worship. Second, go to confession once a year. The third is to um, observe days of fasting and abstinence. So that's holiness. And the fourth is to provide for the needs of the church according to your ability. And that's caring for others. So think about these. The three aspects that James talks about are essential to religion. The church and the five precepts of the church say, okay, this is, this is the floor. This is the minimum. This is the least you can do. And I think the least we can do is just let's put this in context. Because again, we can be so overwhelmed and say like, no, the church has this whole big, big, big thing. You have to do all these things. No, it's just so simple. Go to Mass every Sunday and Holy Day. Once a year, at least, receive Holy Communion. Once a year, go to confession. Uh, observe days of fasting and abstinence. That's, that's overwhelming. No, there are two days of fasting and the Fridays and Lent that are also days of abstinence. So it's not a whole lot. And lastly is give. Provide for the needs of the church according to your means. It doesn't say you need to have 10% you give. It's just whatever you have, whatever your means are, give. Just like St. James said. Love God in your actions, worship. Love your neighbor in your actions, service. And reject all the things that get in between you and those other things. Worship, charity, and holiness. This is the least we can do. So let's go back to the gospel. As we said in the gospel, there were people who were saying now, okay, here, we're taking the optional and making them essential. It went even further. Now, in some readings that we omitted today for the reading, it's, they're still there in the Bible, in Matthew's Gospel, Mark's Gospel. Jesus also condemns folks because he says this. He says, what you've done, and some of you even do this. You know the commandment, commandment number four, of honoring your father and mother, caring, taking care of your parents. Some of you are actually saying, okay, the help that would go to take care of my parents, I'm declaring that, here's the Hebrew word, I'm declaring that korban. And now it's dedicated to God, and now I don't have to take care of my parents anymore because I've dedicated that to God. Remember what korban means? Something which is meant to draw close. What happened, and what Jesus is condemning, is not only did people take what was optional and make it essential, people began to say that what was meant to be the route to the heart had been made into a roadblock. They were using the optional to avoid the essential. It was a way to do things and at the same time withdraw my heart. So here's the question. What do we do? Okay, well, we know we have to be doers of the word, not hearers only. If we, that the route from my head to my heart passes through my hands in worship and service and, and in, in holiness. We have to ask the question, I think, how can I strive after this? Like really, what is the ideal? Like when it comes to your relationship with the Lord, when it comes to your giving him worship, when it comes to taking care of your neighbor, when it comes to holiness, like how can you strive after that courageously? How can you live heroically? That's awesome. What is the ideal of this day? Or what's the ideal of this month? What's the ideal of my life? What's the ceiling? That is a great question to ask. But we also have to ask the question, where's the floor? Then not just how can I live this on my best day, how can I live this every day, even on my worst day? Well, we have the precepts, but also what do you have personally? So um, uh, back, back years ago, there was a man, his name is, now his name is Father Ben. I've talked about Father Ben here many, many times. 
But when Father Ben was 17 years old, he decided, okay, his minimum was every single day he would read a minimum of 15 minutes of the Bible a day. That's what he would do. And he did. I mean, he still does. He's had multiple strokes. He's had multiple, like, just, just things just happened to him again and again. But Father Ben's minimum is 15 minutes of Bible a day. Uh, I mentioned this also. I have a nephew who heard that when he was in sixth grade. And he said, okay, 10 minutes. His minimum was 10 minutes. And I remember even just when he got into high school and he was like, man, overwhelmed by homework and sports and all these things. And his mom called me up to say like, hey, Max is still doing this 10 minutes a day. Can, can he have a break? I'm like, oh, that, hey, it's his minimum. Whatever, your min whatever you think your minimum is, because that's an grand, incredible minimum. When I was in high school, I wanted to pray a rosary a day at least. But there were, I had a minimum. That was my ideal. My minimum was, and this is embarrassing, but it, it's my minimum. My minimum was I would pray one Our Father, one Hail Mary, one Glory Be, and then a prayer that where I, in the name of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, I spiritually adopt an unborn baby who's in danger of abortion. Like, and I would do that. Like, I'd be exhausted. I'd, I'd have um, not only have a busy day. Sometimes when I was just like, man, I am in sin. I can't even lift my eyes to the Lord. Like, those are the prayers that I'm going to pray. <laughs> one Our Father, one Glory Be, one Hail Mary, and this prayer to spiritually adopt a baby in danger of abortion. That was my minimum. And that, I'll tell you this, that helped me navigate high school. Because why? Because I think it's really important. We need to strive. We need to have a ceiling, but we also need to have a floor. And this is the last thing. This is the last thing. I don't want anyone to walk away from this thinking that, well, that's super easy. Like, just take a minimum thing? That, that's going to fit. It's going it's to be perfect. I don't have to rearrange anything in my life. Because why? Because even the minimum sometimes is disruptive. So, like 15 to 20 years ago, my mom, she found this thing, this, she found a hutch, right? A place you put plates and dishes and cups and kettles and beds. <laughs> but just, you know, a hutch. She found a hutch that she, just, she really, really liked. And she went to my dad. She's like, I, this hutch is my dream hutch. I don't know if everyone has a dream hutch, but she had a dream hutch. She said, this is the hutch. And she said, but it doesn't fit in the kitchen. And so after many, many conversations, my dad agreed that they would remodel that part of the house, the kitchen and dining area, in order to fit the hutch. And so I remember when they were under construction, I just thought, oh, they just expand this a little bit, knock out a wall, maybe push out this, or rearrange the tables. They tore down everything. I remember showing up on the, on the site at one point. There were no walls. There was no ceiling. There was simply a fireplace and a chimney sticking up into the sky. In order to, re, in order to fit the minimum, this small little piece of furniture, this hutch, it involved a big rearrangement of life. So again, as I'm saying, we want to strive after the ideal. We want to live courageously, live heroically, pursuing the Lord in worship and in loving our neighbor and in holiness. But we also need to find our minimum. Sometimes that minimum is nothing. Sometimes that minimum is something that causes us to need, that we need to remodel completely the lives that we're living. But we have to remodel. And we have to have a ceiling. We also have to have a floor. We also, we have to have uh, the ideal, but we also have to have the minimum. And we have to have what's the most I can give. But I also have to know what's the least I can do. I invite you to stand as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident in our Father's love for us, we now approach him with all of our needs. That the Church may encourage all the labor by which the laity shapes society in accordance with the Gospel, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all teachers and school administrators, that the wisdom of the Holy Spirit may guide their important work, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For widows and orphans, for the marginalized and the oppressed, and for the unborn children in danger of being aborted, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those burdened with illness may know that the love that Jesus has for them through the love and care extended by their families and friends, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may rest with the Lord for all eternity in the heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to know the least we can do when it comes to allowing the Lord access to our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue our prayer by offering our, our campaign prayer that we're, you know, in the process of trying to raise money, uh, trying to build a church and a Newman Center, a student center here. And so please join us in our prayer because we know that without God, uh, nothing is possible and with God, everything is possible. And so we pray. God, our Father, you have made us for yourself and you have brought us to this moment. We turn away to our sins and toward your grace. We thank you for loving us in our indifference and in our great need. Bless this project with your favor. We believe that, in doing this work, we are saying yes to your will. May the seeds of faith you have planted in Duluth continue to bear fruit and become that large tree which transforms our campus and impacts the world. Bless those who support, plan, and construct this facility so that your house may be a house of prayer, a place where you are loved and glorified and your people are saved and sanctified. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our very good of all his holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. By his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you. 
that the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim, proclaim your, your death, death, O Lord, and, and profess, profess your resurrection until, until you come Amen. again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of, his day, of his saving, the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all your saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom we have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. How great is the goodness, Lord, that you keep for those who fear you. Psalm 31, verse 20. Let us pray. Renewed, renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you and our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita dulce do, espes nostra salve. A te clamamus, exules filiae ve. A te suspiramus, gementes et flentes, in ac lacrimarum vale. Eia ergo, advocata nostra, illos tuos, misericorde soculos, Ad nos converte, et Jesum, benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis, post hoc exilium, ostende, o clemens, o 